This is the third episode of the Bayer Leverkusen What If series. On the first episode, we analyzed the squad and came up with a tactic. On the second episode, we analyzed the squad's performances and decided, well, we'll make a few adjustments. On the third episode, we finished the season and a player has emerged with 30 assists. We designed the tactic around one player. How did we do? Were there any tactical tweaks across the season? My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the channel. This is the place where we do content on the game. Football manager, tips, tricks, hacks, guides. I also stream three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on another channel called Daljit's Moments. And yes, not forgetting Fantasy Draft. That happens on Tuesdays and Saturdays. It's open to the public. You're more than welcome to join us. So how did Bayer Leverkusen do? Not too bad. They finished the season top of the table. Um, in terms of goal scoring, two of the players were top scorers, uh, not counting Patrick Schick, who was also in the double digits. But the outstanding player of the season was Karim Demerbe. We created a tactic around him. That was the goal with the 4-3-3 DM system. And he had 30 assists for the entire season. He also chipped in with 10 goals. This has to be some kind of outstanding performance from a central midfielder on a tank. His assists came from set pieces, but where he exploded into life was largely in open play. In quite a few of our matches, I took advantage of how some teams would set themselves up, giving us space in the middle. We go focus play through the middle with the underlap raising Karim Demerbe's contributions in the game. With him charging through the middle, whenever we set up the focus play with the underlap, we would always find ourselves in a unique position like this where we would have four players in a line and our central midfielder on attack would be able to drive in two defenses. Here with the box-to-box -box midfielder plays the through ball through Karim Demerbe who goes on to score one of the 10 goals this season. If you take a look at the data hub, it just basically tells us what we already know. Right, our goals per game, 2.47 goals conceded. Uh, expected goals against per game, fairly well. But what about the areas where I wanted to see an improvement? Passing for my defenders, generally, most of them were in the zone where we did quite well, including all our fullbacks and the ones who are playing high up the pitch. In terms of movement for defenders, we managed to grab our inverted wing back to move closer to this zone, which is good. Um, they were now more reliable in possession. Mitchell Baker hardly ever played. Jeremy Frimpong was more of a winger half the time, so I expect him to be up here. Uh, but most of our players are closer now to this zone. So overall, I would say that we didn't do too badly. This was the basic tactic we used, right? With wing backs, inverted wing backs, a central defender. Occasionally, I felt the urge to turn this guy into a ball playing defender. I still do. Box to box midfielder, central midfielder, attack winger, inside forward, and poacher. Now, let's look at all the PIs for this tactic. Inverted wing back was using shoot less, often close down more mark tighter. The CDs had nothing on them. The wing back, take furious, shoot less, often close down more mark tighter. CM on attack was making more direct passes, take more risks and dribble less. Box to box midfielder was uh, told to take fewer risks and tackle harder. Uh, the inside forward was told to stay wider, tackle harder, mark tighter. The winger was told to cross from the byline, shoot less often, tackle harder, mark tighter. And up top, the poacher had no play instructions. Largely, this was the formation that we played with. Against some formations, I would switch to this. Now, the only change here would be duties. We turn on the attacking duties for these three roles. We come in here, we add underlap and the focus play instruction. We push high up the pitch and start adding an offside trap. I would do this if a team was playing very defensively or they would play a 4-2-3-1 or a narrow 4-3-5-2. Uh, Anytime a formation would play defensively or the wingbacks would just stay deep or even if a formation had fullbacks in it, I would drive at the defense and put them on, under a lot of pressure. And this also worked. So essentially, we had two formations or rather two setups that I would play. However, playing against 
uh, really good teams that underlap and focus play through the middle, that could be a bit suicidal. I mean, there are times when I would try it. But um, I found out that very quickly that perhaps this was the easiest way to handle those teams. We might not win those games, but we will make it very hard for them to score against us. Then if we look at our results, we didn't do too badly until we met Bayern Munich and Liverpool. Away, I tried to play without the underlap and the focus play. That didn't work very well. Then at home, I decided to go for it with the underlap and overlap. Again, Liverpool were just too strong. Against uh, Bochum, we dominated the match but lost the game. For the first time in the season, our keeper had a shocking performance. Very quickly, we'll take a look at training. We'll pick the inverted wing back. As you can see, his mental development showed fantastic signs of improvement in just one season. Overall, I'm pretty happy with our performances, but what were the changes that I made during those games? Well, it's time for us to rewind. So the idea here is, what do we do against different kinds of formations? The first formation we have to face potentially is the 4-4-2. I'm expecting to beat Freiburg, so I'm taking the match to them. We're playing very high up the pitch. We've got quite a few attacking duties, more than I ordinarily would have, and we've got these underlaps going on. By having so many attack duties, pushing through the transitions, we're pushing quite a lot of players forward. Uh, the inverted wing back is sitting in this hole. The wing back is giving us width here, and we're able to press the entire defense. Uh, here, uh, the inverted wing back plays it out to the wing back, and then we square it for the poacher. The poacher just puts it into the back of the net. Here, our central defender has the ball, plays it out to the wing back. Wing back drives in. The box to box midfielder picks up the ball, lays it off the wing back, squares it into the box, and the central midfielder on attack comes in to score. Generally, at about the 80th minute, I, st I start doing game management. Now here, uh, what I'm looking at is coming off my much higher defensive line. The line of, you can also drop the line of engagement. Uh, we're going to drop the focus play and the underlaps. You're not going to work ball into box. Probably we could even start time wasting even now. And then I'm not going to run at the defense. I'm going to remove player defense as well. Uh, if I wanted to, yes, we could. We can even go regroup. So, our wing back now is now the man of the match. So, those changes seem to have agreed with him. Two full backs, they're not coming up, they're only depending on the wingers. And we quickly add a second. After spotting that their two fullbacks aren't coming up the pitch very much, we apply a lot of pressure on the team to get our second goal. And then we add a third when uh, Paulinho cuts inside, looks up, sees the oncoming run of the central midfielder on attack, and then the underlapping run does wonders. They're still playing with their two fullbacks at the back. We're going to keep on applying pressure. Uh, we snap them in midfield and then feed in for our poacher to score another goal. It's four. With the first half demolition done, we switch back inverted wing back on support, wing back on support, winger on support. We remove the underlap and we come off our outside trap. They, they go down a man, our inverted wing back, place it to the central midfield attack. Now we go into the other attacking pattern where we are feeding the inside forward to score goals. The wing back gets down on the overlap, finds the box-to-box -box midfielder. The two of them work a crossing opportunity for the inside forward who adds another to his tally. If I see a door opening like this, Mazala coming out, and they are going to keep their fullbacks restrained, I'm going through the middle. Carving them up, um, again, the center is an easy place for us to con set up and control the ball. Uh, we use that space, our inverted wing back gets up the pitch and we make it three. If we were to evaluate this team, we didn't do too badly. Here, Paulinho, he's pretty average. If you look at his attributes, composure 12, concentration 10, Finishing 13, off the ball 14, 
Um, he has good, decent acceleration, but 14. And then up top, we depended on Patrick Schick as well as Lucas Alario. Patrick Schick might be faster. He's okay. He's not cut in the mold of Erling Haaland. He got himself into a few decent goal-scoring positions. But because he's not an out-and-out, out, like a top-class striker, we decided to play him as a poacher so that he we could attack the box with numbers instead of depending on one striker to score all the goals. So we were pretty democratic with how the goals were being distributed. 17 goals each for Paulinho, Lucas Alario. Our winger got 14 goals. Our other striker got 13 goals. Uh, our Karim Demembre pitched in with 10. Our box-to-box -box midfielders had a few goals between them. Palacios had four. Arangui had eight. Our defenders, nah, they didn't score too many. Uh, six for Jonathan Ta. Kosuno was the other defender. He scored four goals. As you can see, plenty of players pitched in with goals throughout the game. What is interesting is the number of clear-cut chances the players created. Karim Demerbre created 39 clear-cut chances. The wingers created 28. Our inside forward at 26. The Jeremy Frimpong was the other winger. He'll play in place of Florian Wirtz when he was injured. And then our box-to-box -box midfielder with 13. Our wingback on the left in the left channel created 12. I guess in the case of Bayer Leverkusen, it was strength in numbers. If I were to continue with Bayer Leverkusen for another season, I would start hunting for another inside forward and a winger and a goal scorer. Because in midfield, they're pretty strong. Right. You want to strengthen the left-back department and you want to try and get yourself a world-class inside forward and probably a strong centre forward. If anyone can add these players to that squad, this is going to be a very, very strong squad that can consistently challenge for the title. Well, that's three episodes of Bayer Leverkusen. Where do we go next? I have absolutely no clue. I'm still waiting to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below and then we'll head on to the next club. I hope you enjoyed today's show and you found it useful. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.